Hey guys, and welcome back to the Compass Box Studio channel. Today we're actually trying out and giving our first impressions of the Sonarworks integration into the Universal Audio Apollo ecosystem. And uh, we have some thoughts. So first off, if you guys are new over here, then welcome. My name is Rag Sethi, and this is the Compass Box Studio. Uh, today we're doing our first impressions on the Sonarworks integration. Now for a long time, uh, we've been relying on software calibration for our room. So attenuation, latency, and EQ curves has all been handled by Direct so far. So we've been using that as our primary calibration software uh, because the universal audio system and ecosystem does not have an inbuilt calibration model built into it until now, of course. So we're super excited to try that out. That being said, we're actually a little shocked because like it took UAD so long for this integration to come. Pretty much every other major interface at the professional level has some kind of integration built into it. And uh, Sonarworks already has tie-ups with multiple brands, including Avid, including Focusrite, including RME. So uh, UAD is a little late to the game, but I'm happy that it's finally here. If you guys have never calibrated your room before, then it's actually an interesting experience because essentially you're taking impulses of the space in the room and seeing how much decay there is over certain frequencies. So you'll actually hear your monitors do an entire sweep from 20 hertz to 20k and uh, will react to the, the RT60s, for example, in terms of how long it takes for a particular frequency to die out in your room. Uh, this depends on the size of your room, the modes of your room, and if there's comb filtering and stuff like that's happening. Uh, this is complicated acoustical science, and I'm not an acoustic engineer by any stretch of the imagination. So we rely on software calibrations like Sonarworks to help us get a more natural and neutral experience when we listen to music and we mix music in a control room. Now, there are some things that I noticed right off the bat that I haven't actually seen too many people talk about. Um, so the very first thing that I noticed was the fact that for the stereo calibration profiles, you can't have two different calibration profiles for your main set of monitors and your alternate set of monitors. And this is very, very odd. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm on my console app right now. And uh, for anybody who's seen their UAD devices before, then, you know, consoles are fairly familiar territory for you guys. But I'm going to click this section over here. So the monitor correction section is the new part that has been added uh, to console. So I'm going to select my monitor calibration and correction. And I will bring it over here so you guys can see it. So as you can see, this is the calibration profile that we did. And we've, you know, put it onto the Apollo correction add-on, which is also a separate buy, which we, we'll get to that in a bit. But this is what the calibration looks like. So these are for our main set of monitors, which are our ATCs. So actually, it's not our ATCs. Our ATCs are actually currently wired to our alternate monitor. So we use Neumanns as our uh, near fields and then ATCs as our far fields. So, um, Check this out. So this is the, the regular calibration for the main set of monitors and you can see the Alt option over here. So when I click the Alt option, we just get this. Uh, monitor correction is unavailable when Alt monitoring is active. Now this is a very bizarre thing to release this software with because most professional studios and I mean UAD devices that are there in professional studios will have multiple set of monitors and in fact it's kind of funny because the UAD uh, Apollo X16 and the X8P actually has a dedicated alt button which is designed to switch between your mains and you can have up to two more pairs of alternate speakers and monitors to reference things out of. Now, obviously, you can't have the same calibration profile for the EQ on both sets of monitors. It doesn't work that way. Uh, both the Neumanns, which are our near fields, as well as the ATCs, which are our far fields, will have two dedicated curves that are unique to themselves. And this is kind of strange and funny because we have our Neumanns, which are our near fields, coming out of the main monitor out of the X16 because we also use the Neumanns as part of our Atmos 7.1.4 system. And in terms of the labeling that goes in Atmos, you need to have your left and right of Atmos being the main master outs of the X16. So we've put our ATCs on line output one and two, which is our first alt. Now, even if I had to manually just upload a new correction curve for the alternate speakers, that would be annoying but it's still doable because then I can have a separate correction for the near fields and a separate correction for the alternate speakers. But in this situation like you saw I just pressed the alt button on my x16 and it just says that sorry correction is just not available for alt. And 
for a professional grade gear, which is uh, the Universal Audio X16, and I'm sure that most students that have an X16 have multiple sets of monitors, will require discrete ca uh, calibration curves for the near fields and the mid fields and the far fields. So this feels like a very weird omission to not have at release. That being said, I'm sure this is like a simple software related thing, uh, which they can probably fix later on and then just give us an update. Uh, Universal Audio, if you guys are listening to this video, probably not, but if you guys are listening to this video, please get this done because for us professionals that have multiple monitors, it really, really helps to have the calibration built in. First of all, thank you so much for having the integration of Sonarworks uh, native onto the DSP of the device, but we need different calibration profiles. We need a different calibration for the mains and for the alts, and then we need a different one for the Atmos as well, which we do have, which I'll get to in a bit. So uh, learning number one from our first impressions is that we can only have one calibration profile for our mains and we don't have any calibration for our alternates. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but like I'm saying, I, I'm presuming that UAD will do some kind of software update to have this option available or at least activated you know, in a future release because it seems, it seems silly to have the function of switching to multiple uh, stereo alternates but not have separate calibration profiles so let's hope that there's an update coming along soon now for the atmos calibration so we had done an atmos calibration in direct before which was a very very different experience so the one thing i have to give sonarworks is the ease of use when it comes to doing the calibration when you have to calibrate multiple points in your room they make it super easy and the ui is really really intuitive for people who've never done calibration in their lives it's very easy to quickly get to a good spot. Now, an interesting thing that I found out as part of doing the calibration is that the base management component for the 714 setup is also handled by Sonarworks, but you have to turn that on before. So it's, I mean, those instructions aren't super clear on the calibration you know, a methodology that you have to go through. So you kind of have to do a little bit of research and we found out that we have to enable the base management before because the base management information is encoded into the calibration profile that Sonarworks gives you. Then after you're done through the entire process of the calibration, which takes about, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, depending on how big your room is, um, but it takes a little bit to go through the calibration for all those speakers. So basically all you need to do is just click a calibration profile. Right now it's showing that there's a layout mismatch because it's referring to our Atmos setup, but don't worry about that. Um, if I go over here, this is my Atmos sort of uh, profile that has been created for me. And I just have this special button over here called apply profile to Apollo X. And once I click that, it automatically gets uploaded onto the Apollo uh, X16. Now, another small thing that sort of uh, drew some attention to some inconsistencies over here, or maybe I'm just doing something wrong, by the way, if there is something that I'm doing wrong that I have missed out on and, you know, it actually doesn't work the way, please comment below. Uh, you know, this is our first impression. We just downloaded Sonarworks where I've never used Sonarworks before. So this is the first time I'm using the Sonarworks ecosystem as well. So if there's something I haven't done correctly, make sure you comment down below and I will check it out. But one interesting thing that I've also seen is that, so, we have two Apollo interfaces that are daisy chained together via Thunderbolt. So we have the X16, which is our primary interface, and it's slaved to the X8P, which is our other interface. This is important because the X16 does not have any headphone outputs, but the X8P does. It has two discrete headphone outputs. And now based on the information that I've read online, as well as some of the videos, if you're using the X8P discreetly, you can also have two different calibration profiles of the headphone. So uh, headphone one can have a different calibration profile for, uh, I don't know, the, you know, the M50Xs and a headphone uh, uh, two can have a different calibration profile for like a open back headphone, for, for example. So you can have two different calibration profiles for these two headphone outputs, which is great. But again, if they could do two different calibration profiles for the two outputs coming over here, why couldn't they have just done two different calibration profile for the alternate stereo speakers? But I mean, I'm ranting right now. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because in my monitor control, I don't see the option for doing the calibration for the headphones. Um, so we do have two headphone outputs on the X8P, but I can't seem to see where those calibration cues are and where am I supposed to upload a profile for a headphone, for example. So because X16 is our main interface, maybe that's why it's not showing it, but the idea of the Apollo ecosystem is that you can daisy chain a couple of interfaces together and get an expanded IO of inputs and outputs. So 
am I doing something wrong? I mean, am I missing a setting somewhere where I can also access the headphone calibration profiles? Guys, help me out over here. So anyways, that's my first impressions of using the Sonarworks ecosystem when it comes to integrating it with the UAD Apollo. Um, I, I, I'm really excited that we have the calibration that is native and built into the DSP of the Apollo. Uh, I can't tell you how much of an issue it is having software monitoring on and then having it as a plugin on your door and then maybe you forget it to turn it off during bounce and it has a different sound than when it comes out so there are some issues when it comes to software calibration and uh, you know we have experienced quite a few of them but this is something i've been waiting on for a very long time the calibration being native to the interface i just wish the execution had the details that i just you know talked about uh, if there's anything else about the calibration that you guys have experienced that you know is not really there yet uh, please comment below uh, hopefully uad will also see this and be like okay you know there are a couple of bugs and things we need to sort out but on the whole the first impressions i really like the the process of getting the calibration done it's super intuitive and it's very very easy although i did notice a couple of weird things so when we did our first atmos calibration in the 714 format uh, we noticed that the base management actually took up a lot of the low end information from the satellites so everything that we tried to play in atmos the lfe was pretty much being clipped, uh, you know, for any sample that we were using, whether it's music or film samples. So I don't really know about how that happened, but uh, we'll probably do another calibration anyways, because we're also getting used to this new format of having the calibration built into the device. So we'll do a couple of more calibrations to get an idea in terms of what the space is doing. Is it showing consistent results? That's something I want to see because uh, a good calibration software in the same room, in the exact same sort of, you know, dynamic settings should replicate the same calibration curve. So I also want to see how well it does that. But that's it for today. Uh, I mean, there's, there is going to be a more more in-depth look into the Sonarworks uh, calibration as well as the integration to Apollo coming later on. So if you guys want to see that, please comment below. We check out everything and I'll see you guys next time.